All right, everyone, so for the first real lecture, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of advanced techniques in drawing and then coloring, which should help you in your uh, first project. So I've started up um, Adobe Animate. I don't have any file yet. Uh, just to remind me, because it was so long ago, what kind of file do I need to create and what are the, the dimensions of the first assignment? HTML5. Exactly. Close. HTML5, great. And then we're going to set our uh, properties of our project to 1920 by 1080. So now if you're not used to it, you definitely want to take advantage of the various keyboard shortcuts. Um, and um, for example, one that I use all the time is if I'm on, like, for example, the Move tool, uh, and I want to move around the screen very quickly, if you hold down the space bar, you get the little hand and you can drag it, right? So it's just another way to kind of get around. You might have already known this, uh, but holding down the space bar lets you move around on the screen. Well, I'm going to save this. I'll just call it Practice 1. Go ahead and save as. And remember, if it suddenly crashes when you try to save, try using the, uh, the blank template file that I've got for you. But I'm going to save this just as practice 01 on my flash drive. You should be saving your work on your drive uh, instead of the network folder because it's public and we don't know when they're going to clean that out. And we don't know when someone's going to rip off your great idea. So keep it on your drive. Now, speaking of keyboard shortcuts, I want to start drawing with the brush tool. Does anyone know the keyboard shortcut for the brush tool? I think I heard someone say B as in brush. So simply pressing B. I think Y is a slightly different kind of brush, but that one might work too. But if you go with plain old B for brush, you can start to draw with that, of course. So uh, keyboard shortcut, easy to remember, B for brush. Well, what if I want to uh, change the size of my brush in the keyboard? Does anyone know the shortcuts for changing the size of your, of your brush on the keyboard? Square brackets. Yes, square brackets. So right next to backslash and the letter P, you've got some square brackets. The right bracket will give you a bigger brush. The left bracket will give you a smaller brush. So hopefully you've got one hand on the keyboard and one hand on your on your pen, right? Or even if you're just using the mouse, uh, that's still very useful. So quickly change the sizes of your brushes. So the thing about um, Adobe Animate is that everything that you work with is basically a vector graphic, uh, which means that it's all mathematically based. So I drew some squiggles, but it's all mathematically based which means that all of these little squiggles are separate entities. And you can still move these entities around. What's the shortcut for moving a, uh, an item? V. V. So I bring that up because when we get to some real drawing in just a moment, these things can be so helpful to switch with your brush, B, switch to the Move tool, V, and then you can grab something and move it on top of something else. So that's very basic. You probably have that experience. Uh, but once you get used to keyboard and mouse, you can go a lot faster. Now, uh, true or false, uh, these are two separate lines. True. False. Why? Why of either? The two that are touching? Yes. Because now they're one thing. Now they're one thing, yes. So the answer is false. They're not two separate lines. If you were to click on one, now they're both connected. The why of it is because of the color. I drew them both as uh, blue. But then if I were to draw it with a different color, red, and then draw over here, so true or false, I have three lines touching right here. Two. Yes, yes. We have two separate lines right here because one is red and one is blue, just like I said. Uh, the weird thing is, though, if you were to click on one of the colored lines, you get the selection around that one. And when you move it, OK, it's still separate. Um, the weird part is that if I then try to move the blue lines, 
Okay, well, I'm going to move with the blue line, so I'm going to select it and move it. Whoops, only a little piece moves. Because wherever the differently colored line intersects, it cuts it. So actually, I've got one, two, three, four, five lines right there. Wherever they intersected has become a new line, a new entity. And that's the power of vector-based graphics, that it's all mathematically based. Um, not like a um, not like a regular like Photoshop, which I, which is often uh, raster based, which is uh, little dots on the screen. All of these are mathematical formulas. And you might have noticed here with the move tool, if I go to the edge of a shape of a line, uh, the cursor changes a moment. See there? Let me zoom in. See how it changes over to a little curve line? Well, because it's mathematically based you can pull these edges out and create all of these interesting shapes you know that was from my original that was from my original just brush stroke and i'm able to edit all of these different aspects of it well i can move this over here and connect it back over here and they touch and now they're a, they're a shape together again so this, for example, I'm going to grab that edge and pull it out over here so it touches here. Now that they're touching and they're the same color, I can select, and they both select, I can move both. So raise your hand. How many of you knew that, or some of those things? OK, good, some of those things, good. It just takes practice. There's so much to, uh, to learn about any of this software, but uh, that's what these classes we're going to be covering. Now. I'm zooming in here. What's the keyboard shortcut to zoom in and out? Uh, control plus and minus. Holding control. Control key plus and minus. Or you can also use the mouse, I think. Yeah, you can also control scroll wheel. Hold down control on the keyboard and then zoom in. So the point of that is I'm going to jump to a really intricate part of my drawing to zoom in right here and then control scroll wheel back or control plus control minus and I need it to be perfect I needed it like this actually okay there we go now it's perfect so you can zoom in zoom out okay so this that I've been drawing uh, I'm just gonna select it all with the move tool the, the black arrow. I'm going to select it with the selection, uh, they call it the selection tool, sorry. I, I'm used to also the move tool, selection tool. Uh, I'm going to select it all and just delete it. Because now let's draw a, uh, let's draw a circle. Well, actually before that, um, I want to uh, change, I want to, these pens are really cool, they're very natural. And in the real world, if you're using a, a marker or a pencil, you can often uh, get like cool lines out of a real pencil, right? You can do the same thing with this digital pen if you turn on these options. Uh, if you haven't been using this, when you turn on your, when you select your brush tool, I would recommend to turn on both of these final options down here, which is use tilt uh, or use pressure. Actually, I think your sidebar here is a little different. It's one long strip, or is it two columns? It's right. Really long stretch it out. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't see the final options there, you might want to grab that edge and stretch it to two columns. Now you need to switch to the brush tool first, and the last two um, options there, I would recommend the tilt and the pressure. So then now, if you touch lightly, you get a light line, and you touch harder, you get a thicker one, based on the size of the, of the starting brush. I'm going to go with a big brush. I'm pressing the right bracket. Okay, so there's a light touch, and here's a harder touch. Okay, so... The point of that is what I want to do is uh, let's draw a circle and let's put a cross through it. I drew it with the same color, so it's all the same thing. It's one object with the brush tool. 
uh, but we can do some really interesting things here. Let's say I only wanted to keep the lines inside of the circle. I want to remove the lines outside. What might be a way to do that? In the real world, on regular paper, if I draw outside the lines, what would I do in the real world? Eraser. We've got an eraser on these two. If you flip them over, eraser. Now, don't get too far in erasing because that's annoying. I have to go like this and then like this. Don't worry about that. But what I'm saying is, if you flip it over, you get the quick eraser. Here's perhaps another way to do it. Um, let's say I do erase a little bit off of here and here and here and here. These are now separate pieces, which I can select for each and then press delete on the keyboard. That may be another way to do it. Once you disconnect a line, it's its own separate thing. You can manipulate it separately with the selection tool. I then select and then click delete on the keyboard. I'm going to undo that. We have multiple levels of undo, so actually I'm going to go all the way back like that. Let's go back for a moment where it's still lines that overlap out to the edge. I want to duplicate this shape. Look at that, I duplicated it super fast. You probably want to duplicate things. Maybe you draw half a face and then you want to duplicate that half and flip it over. So to duplicate things quickly with the select tool, I've made a little selection box around everything. I can press Control D on the keyboard. It duplicates it. Now, whoops, that's two red lines on top of two red lines. And like I said before, that when lines of the same color touch, they, they combine. But because it's still selected, it's actually still separate. So I can still separate them. If I were to have deselected, if I clicked on an empty spot, okay, now they've connected. And now when I try to move the shape over, everything moves because it's no longer two shapes. So let's do this. Let's select what you've drawn. Let's duplicate it. Let's separate them. I want two copies of what you drew. Put them side by side. Actually, let's do three copies, one down here. So duplicating objects, very, very useful. When we get to the animation portion of things, we might make a row of trees. I don't want to draw seven trees. Maybe I want to draw one and duplicate it six times. Maybe I want to draw two different trees and duplicate them separate times so that it doesn't look exactly the same. Maybe I've duplicated uh, the tree three times, but then I go into one of the trees and I tweak it a little bit. I pull out an edge, or I bring it in, or I color it differently. So that's the, one of the great things about digital drawing and digital animating, that it's just equations in the computer. So I'm able to change this stuff um, very, very quickly, very easily. So starting with the exact same shape, just creating a bunch of other weird things like that. And I still want to get rid of the um, I still want to get rid of the, the outer edges, the, out, the outer lines that go past the edges. And like I said, what you could do is you could start with your eraser and erase a little bit so that they don't touch and then delete that piece. But because I know I'm OCD, and many of us are with our stuff, um, look at how terrible that looks right here. It's like seven pixels that are really bothering me. So okay, I'm going to go back and get even closer. But then, whoops, I cut out the part inside. Let me show you a way instead to get it like perfect, some of these little details. Because this is all mathematically based, you can do some really weird things. So watch this. Let me zoom in a little bit more. 
you can actually grab an edge and you see here when I'm at like a little corner my arrow changes to a corner when I'm at another sort of an edge it gets that and if I click and drag that okay it changes like that but if I instead grab a corner and watch this I'm gonna click and drag it over here I'm pulling it over itself let it go and it cut away the part disconnecting it and making the curve really nice uh, it's not always going to be perfect but again this is so different perhaps than other sorts of drawing programs you may have used um, you can overlap these sorts of shapes and edges and get interesting results and what I'm trying to do is cut away those lines that go past the circle. Um, you, it, you might be fighting with it that I'm trying to drag it here and it doesn't go where you want. I usually turn off this magnet. So in the move tool or in the selection tool, uh, I usually turn off that magnet because when I'm trying to grab something and drag it, it's going to stick to something else. It's going to magnetize. So I usually turn that off and then I can drag things exactly where I want. So I'm going to turn that off, and then I'm going to try again, and then now I can pull that edge exactly how I want. So that's been removed there, and I'll go to the top. I'm using the space bar to then click and drag to move around to get to the next part of my drawing, and I'll do the same thing here. I'll pull this edge to overlap with that edge. Perfect cut. Scroll down over here. Pull this one up. Scroll here. Pull that one out. So I've uh, separated those lines from each other and I can then select and delete the leftover. So play with that for just a moment, uh, grabbing some of these edges, overlapping, see what happens. You can get really weird like this. So if I've got you know this line like this, and I grab this edge of it and pull it on top of itself, all of that disappeared, except for those edges that didn't overlap. And I have two different shapes here. connect these again, same color, deselect, and now they're one object. And here I am, I'm creating, what would you say this is here? Hmm. A hatchet, maybe? maybe? Right there, chopping. Yeah. So I started with like just a line, and then I pulled things over, and I dragged them and stuff, and then now I've got another kind of shape. So let me pause there. Anyone having any trouble, any questions so far? Uh, we're doing very simple shapes and we'll do real drawings in a moment, but the big idea is get used to the keyboard, get used to the keyboard shortcuts, get used to this is a, this is a different kind of object that you might have been used to before. They overlap and do all this weird stuff. Um, any questions? Remember to save your work also. Uh, if your hand is on the keyboard, you want to hit that control S every once in a while. Maybe you know it's not it's it's nothing to draw one line control S, draw another line control S. I don't really think it's any problem to just save, save, save right away. Uh, because you never know. These uh, when I walked in this morning to turn on all the computers, all the computers crashed at once. I'm like, ah, oh, what's what's up with these computers? So that's really weird. It's very weird, but they've been fine so far after I rebooted them. Um, so just remember to save. Yeah. I looked it up. They no longer have a backlog of, of uh, save files. They used to save like chronologically in a separate folder, mm. but you can change the rate at which they do the restore in edit preferences. Yeah, let's check that out. That's a good point. Uh, thank you, Gary. So right now uh, there isn't an auto save, but if you've been saving your files to your flash drive, 
um, you know, there's a way to perhaps restore what you might have worked with. Let's check this out for a moment. Let's go to the Edit menu and then Preferences. Let's check out a quick preference right here. Edit menu, Preferences. Mm -hmm. um, auto Recovery 10 minutes. You see an option right there. Every 10 minutes, it's going to kind of do a little backup in memory or somewhere uh, to help you try to recover. Let's say you're drawing and then suddenly it crashes and you start to uh, animate over again. Oh, well, I lost 10 minutes of work. I think that's way too high uh, that it's 10 whole minutes between backups. Now, I don't think I would put it to like one minute because that's going to be using a lot of memory and storage and stuff. Perhaps around three to five minutes. I won't lose as much if I change it a little lower. Uh, but not so low as one minute, I think that's going to affect performance. So this is optional, but you might think about it or just get used to saving, and this might be a way to help you recover files just in case. Okay, so let's do, let's do this. Um, did you see here how I hid everything easily so I can focus on my drawing? I hid the timeline, I hid the panels on the side, I'm, I'm focusing on my drawing. There's a keyboard shortcut for that, F4. F4 on the keyboard will turn that on and off to focus on your, uh, your drawing. Not Alt F4. <laughs> it's going to shut down Adobe Animate. It's going to ask you to save, hopefully, but Alt F4 shuts down a program. Just F4. So, okay, so. I want to. Um, I've been kind of drawing this stuff here. I, let's say I want to keep it. Uh, let's say the point of this is, you know, I'm creating these objects that I that I do want to use for my project. So I don't want to lose this. Uh, and I'm kind of drawing on a on a piece of paper at the moment. And I want to get another piece of paper to draw on another sheet of paper. Uh, that's when layers come in. Bottom left corner, when you've got your timeline open, I'm on layer one, and it is currently visible. The little dot on the eye hides the layer. What I want to do is create a new layer, hide the old layer, and also lock it just in case. So you see you've got the icon, new layer. I'm going to call layer 1 circles. I'm going to hide layer 1. I'm going to lock layer 1. and then select layer 2, and that's where we'll draw on a new sheet of paper. So when I draw, uh, I use a variety of layers to help me sort of um, draw different elements into pieces. Maybe I'm drawing a character, and on one layer I'm going to draw the head, and another layer I'm going to draw the body so I can still move them around. Because what could happen is that if... Um, if I'm drawing with the same color, oh no, I've connected them all, right? No, even though they're all the same color, they're in separate layers. I drew the line on one layer, I drew the circles in another, the other layer's locked. These are still separate objects. So you can get sort of around the, the thing about similar color lines connect if they're in separate layers. That should make sense if you've used Photoshop or any other similar software. Uh, so as long as things are on a separate layer, same color, they can still be manipulated. So that's useful. Let's do this. Let's say, here's your challenge. Draw a self-portrait. Yeah, give it a try. Draw yourself. One more time. Yeah, that on paper. Last semester. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
now the point of this is okay I drew it super fast super sketchy but the idea is I can use what I've been talking about so far of overlapping lines of dragging and pulling lines and such because let's say okay there's my hair I had a I had a bad hair day today but I uh, wanted to remove some of these lines like this line over here in this area you know that's kinda weird I don't want that well if I were to drag this corner over here to here this separates that line and I can then delete it and then this line of the skull I also want to drag it over here this line over here delete that so then perhaps it's taking more shape now into actual areas so I I just drew it really fast sketchy and it's not perfect and such but it's enough for the example where I could go in and then start to delete some of these things that overlap this is one possible way this is one possible way that I could uh, do my drawings maybe they're not perfect the first time but this is all again mathematical formulas and what that means for us tangibly is that we can just um, kind of drag and uh, over things and uh, fill them in like this this hollow shape here I can get the paint bucket and fill it in but I can also since I'm already here I can just grab this edge and pull it over this edge and then kind of fills in so like right here these lines went too far into the glasses I'm gonna pull it over here this one might be a little trickier because of the of the nature of what was drawn there so I might jump over to an eraser or I might pull out the uh, the direct selection tool or what do they call it here again they call it the sub selection tool where you can actually see the mathematical points that make up the the shape so you saw a moment ago I should have made it I should have copied it into its own layer um, just to show before and after. Actually, I can kind of do that. What I can do is uh, I'm going to select that, copy it into memory, Control C. I'm going to undo it to take it all the way back. It's still in memory. Control V, paste. There's my before and after. So still needs work, but uh, which one looks more complete? Which one looks more real? Which one looks more uh, ready to start to talk to you? Uh, this one right here with all of this sort of still sketchiness, I'm gonna fix that. This one right here, where, okay, there's there's a hair, there's a beard, there's glasses. Okay, I need to connect that to that. Just drag the corner and connect it. I want to remove this extra line here. Drag this corner and overlap it to remove it. the ears. Okay, now the hair is overlapping with the ear. So if you do, you know, simple circles and all of that, fine. But when you really want to get a good result and you're trying to create something real, you see you still have all of this ability. So pulling all of these edges over. Again, this is going to be perhaps... That's fine. I can always go in and redraw it with the brush tool, add a little bit more to it. Yep. Then the ear over here, I don't need that line anymore. Like I said, this line, I wasn't liking it anymore, so overlap it, remove it. I don't want the mouth to touch there, so drag this over. Now, perhaps going through it quickly, but remember, I'm recording all of this. If you want to replay it, um, once you
once you get the link, you'll be able to see this as many times as you watch. We play it, fast forward, jump to the good parts um, at any time. Even when the class is over um, in eight weeks, I'm going to leave this up. You can go back whenever and review any of the things that I've recorded. I, I might not record every single thing for various reasons, and I'll let you know when I don't, but I usually will be recording what I'm doing. Any questions so far? So I could obviously keep working at this for a while. But I want to cover a little bit of coloring. So if you weren't quite there, let me pause for like a minute. Create something that we can colorize. If you want to, you can put it in its own layer or not. But just create something. I'll show you some advanced colorization in just a moment. Uh, just create some kind of uh, face or something you need to color, and then we'll see some techniques. Take a moment to do that. If you need any help, call us over. We'll just take like a few seconds, a minute or something, draw something, and then we'll color it. Now, because this is a digital drawing, here's what I've drawn so far. It's kind of small on my screen. I have all of this extra space on my sheet of paper. I want to make this larger. Um, so a quick shortcut to select everything. You might already know one, and I'll show you another. Perhaps what's another way to select all of this at once? Control A. Control A lets you select all the things on a specific layer. So I, I want to select all of these things so that I can make it bigger. I've got a lot, a lot bigger paper to work with, but they're kind of small. So you can control A to select all. You can also click the little dot of the layer to kind of do a, a select all. Uh, actually, is it the dot or the name of the is it the dot or the name of the layer? It is, yeah, the dot, the layer works too, I guess. So I'm trying to um, select all so that I could then uh, make this a lot larger. Um, I want to resize everything. I want to quickly transform everything. I want to make it from this small size to a big size. Um, you've got a tool over here, the uh, free transform which is also has a keyboard shortcut. If you notice, when I said B for brush, well, when you hover over the brush tool, it says there, brush tool is B. When you hover over the selection tool, it says right there, it's a V for selection. When I want to transform something, I want to make it smaller, bigger, rotate it, it's Q. Now, I don't know how they chose Q for free transform tool, but I like to think about it as a quick transform. So Q for quick transform so that I can then switch over and grab the edges and make it big. So I know that for myself, oftentimes I'm trying something and maybe it's a little too small. I'm zoomed in too much. If I want to make it different sizes, I can uh, uh, easily select it and then transform it. Well, I want to colorize this character, but on a separate layer because um, I want to leave alone the original lines and um, I want to then color it separately. So for this layer, uh, maybe I'll call it basic face. I'm going to lock the layer. And I want to duplicate the layer. I want a copy of my current layer so I can make some changes you can right click the layer and you've got it right there duplicate layers 
So one uh, layer will have the basic face, the basic lines. Another layer will have the um, colors. I'm going to hide basic face, lock basic face, and instead of basic face, I'll call it uh, colorized face. So that's useful. Right clicking can duplicate a layer perfectly. Okay, so with this, with this um, drawing over here, I'm going to drop in a few basic colors, and then we'll do some cool highlights and perhaps some shell, uh, cell shading concepts and stuff. Uh, but I've got to uh, fill in my flat color first. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to get the paint bucket tool. It's right there. The paint bucket fills in colors into shapes. And so um, with the paint bucket, I'm going to uh, select a color. So I'm going to color my hair first. I'm going to select the fill color. I'm going to fill into a, an area. I'm going to fill black or gray or whatever. So I'm going to select the color and then click it to fill in that shape. Fill in a color. So that's easy. I use the paint bucket. I select my color and I drop it in. Whoops! It went uh, it went further than I thought. I only wanted the hair. Well, this. There's a little gap right there. So wherever there are gaps, the color will spill into an adjoining area. So I'm going to undo that. And I could either draw what's missing or perhaps pull in so that they touch. Now there's no gap there. And I see the, the glasses. OK, well, the glasses should be touching over here. They're, they're on my ears. OK, so now they're touching. And now I'll fill in color. K for the bucket keyboard shortcut. So if I'm on one tool, selection tool, switch to the bucket, press K. And yeah, it's not a big deal to move over and click the click the tool and move back to click the tool. And actually, it could be because when you repetitively do something over and over, when you move your hand back and forth like this, or your wrist and all of that, that's the problem with carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, I know you're all very young and you never have to worry about that ever. Uh, sure. Uh, but you have to remember that. Uh, you have to remember that doing things repetitively could cause injury in the future. So, things like keyboard shortcuts are very useful because then you can easily, if your hand's already there, you can switch from tool to tool. So, I'm going to fill in some colors here. It happened again. I thought I had everything, um, every edge, every gap touching. So um, it looks like there's a tiny, look at that, it's like two pixels, two pixels gap where those shapes didn't touch. And when I'm zoomed out to this view, it, it looks fine. So OK, I'll fill it in. And it goes too far. So you can go in and have those shapes touching. Or you've also got an option in the paint bucket here, gap size. At the moment, it's saying, don't close gaps. Fill in the color, and if there's a gap, the color's going to spill in. Or automatically close gaps that are small, whatever they define as small, I don't know, medium and large. So I could either go in and fix that tiny little minuscule thing, or I could say, well, just fill in some of these small gaps, no problem. There it is. That's fine, because then when I zoom in, see, it did it for me right there. It does connect it. I zoomed in 2,000% to confirm that, that there's a little gap fixed. So either pull this over so that it's touching, or maybe, depending on the size of the gap, 
So I use the small gap here. I'm curious if I go further out over here. That looks like a big gap. Does the large gap work there? Oh yeah, look at that. Even that big right there, it kind of finds a spot somewhere to close it. So maybe using the paint bucket tool with a bigger tolerance for gaps might be useful. So let's go ahead and fill in some basic colors. Um, I'm going to go with Simpsons skin tone over here. So I don't know, is it this one over here maybe? Sure. So in this case, it's either looking like Simpsons or Pac-Man. But uh, in this case, OK, filled in color, and it didn't go to the forehead. Well, obviously, because there's a line there blocking it. So easily color that in. So let's say I drew something like that. I filled in some basic colors. All of the all of the colors are filled in really nice. Um, see if you know how to do this. Can you change the color of your canvas, the, the background color? Do you know how to go there and change your background color to your whole document? Sounds right. If you switch to the selection tool. And then you have your properties. These things change based on what tool you've got. So if you've got your selection tool, you see stage. And I'm going to change it to something else better. Oh, wait a minute. I'm seeing through the glasses. I had it in mind that it was glasses. It was white reflecting glasses, I guess. And if you were drawing your own character, like your eyes and such, the, the pupils of your eyes, they weren't actually filled in with white. They were transparent. So imagine if this was being animated and it walked in front of a building. The brick texture would go through the eyes. So I'm showing you this because I recommend right away when you start your projects, um, you might think about changing the default stage color from bright white to like a light gray or some other color so that you see, oh, that should have been white. I never filled it in. It's transparent. So I, I like to do that, changing the basic stage color to some off white scene where I might have accidentally been lulled into a false sense of security that I colored everything because it's actually transparent. So I've got some uh, some colors filled in. Now this far along, um, hmm, I drew this as, as a red outline, and I didn't really want that. I, now that I see it, I, I should have drawn it with a black outline. All is lost. No, because you can still edit those shapes. Um, these red outlines, I want to change them to black. And there's several ways to do it. I can use the paint bucket. I can select black. And I can then drop it on the, um, I can drop it onto the, the shape. And everywhere where it's touching, it changes. The mouth wasn't touching anything, so it didn't change. Well, that's easy to fix. But um, depending how you drew it, it won't always be perfect. But depending how you drew it, you can switch between the different uh, the different uh, colors of shapes.
so because it's still a separate color all of these things that are black I can uh, go in and change it to some other color paint bucket all of the edges change Have you ever seen a style of drawing where the edges are not pure black, but they're like a darker version of the inner color? Like this yellow skin tone, I want like a darker edge instead of pure black. Uh, let's say for fun over here, okay, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give, my, uh, give this character, okay, red hair. Let's say I want to um, also have a red edge a darker red edge instead of black so the trick here is that if I wanted to only change the color of the hair of the edge of the hair I can see that the red hair I want the edges to change well Adobe Animate sees black as one shape and we've seen previously that once things are a different color they they, they separate and they can be edited differently. So I need to sort of somehow separate the edges of the hair from the edges of the face. And we can't do that. Let me show you how and then I'll explain it. I can I can draw lines in certain places to separate them and then when I use another color just to be obvious these other colors have uh, don't touch anymore um, a moment ago you saw that when I clicked to change the black edge everything changed because it was the same color but drawing something else with a different color, separates it. So this is a shape, this is a shape. This is a shape, this is a shape. And this continues over here, where I drew that line. So now all of that's a separate shape, which I can color differently. I would want to do this a little bit more accurately. And the way I'm doing this is with the, the line or the pencil tool. The brush tool that we've been using so far is one kind of drawing tool. It uses fills. Uh, and the line tool or the pencil tool uses the, uh, the strokes. So if I were to draw over here um, a line with a completely different color, with the different tool, also, I don't like that it's so jagged, so we've got the option right here, smooth. So now I can draw over here, can disconnect it here, disconnect it here, and over here, disconnect it here, with a different color, with the line tool or the pen tool, I can separate these shapes. And once they're separate shapes, I can fill them in with another color. And then I can remove those lines. And the cool thing is there will be no gap. If I then select the line, double click the line usually, Double click it, delete. No gap at all. Double click the line, delete. Let me do that again. It is, that's pretty advanced, but this is what I want to do. I want to separate these shapes. One color separates from another color. Fills are separate from strokes. Um, I want to do something like this, where then, okay, then now I can sort of fill in. I'll go back and do it again one moment, but now let's say I, I go in here and, you know, just for another color, I drop it in here, and then the, the edges of the skin uh, color might change. Well, I would have to go in and do what I'm 
doing right now so that the edges of, of the beard don't change to that, so that the edges of the glasses don't change to that. It's not a, you know, a, a, a perfect solution, but it gives you the ability to uh, separate things with that, that other tool, simply because it's mathematical. Let me go back and do that again. So the idea is, um, I'm going to do it this time with the line tool, straight line tool. Draw a little line right there. Draw a line right here. Draw a line over here. Draw lines over here. Line tool, different color, should be enough to separate. So here I am dropping a darker color, a darker version of the color of uh, onto the um, onto that shape. It's not so visible on my monitor, but uh, on the projector here, but on my monitor it is the color also went too far into the glasses. It did separate there, but then because this was touching here, it went into there. So I need to draw another line that separates it here. Then the hair will be filled in, the glasses will be separate, and then um, fill in the color. So I'm saying here, uh, I'm going to separate it here, then the paint bucket, and then now the color no longer spills over. I have all of these weird lines now, but one way to get rid of them all is if they all touch, I could delete them all at once. Well, they're all separate. If I double click on a line, I'd have to delete each one separately. So if I double click that one and delete it, and then double click on that one and delete it, but of course, there's a faster way. If you notice, these two lines here are touching. And if I double click on one of those, they both select. So if this line is touching this line, same color, double click selects them. If this line was touching this line, they would be the same, and then I could delete them. Well, one weird trick that I like to use is with the pencil. It's a shortcut on that one again, shift Y. With the pencil, um, connect it here, connect it here, connect it here, connect it here, and then do this, sure. No, I'm not freaking out. I'm not freaking out because then I can just double click, delete it all, doesn't affect anything at all. Separate tools, separate concepts. So let me pause right here. Uh, try to do some of this. Uh, colorize this a little bit. Uh, cut these edges a little bit. Maybe fill in some colors. Uh, call me over and show me what you've done so far. I want to see how you're doing, uh, but give it a try. Uh, we'll do a little more lecture in just a moment, but try this for a moment. I want to see how people are doing. So colorize things a little bit. I'll show you about highlights and cell shading in a moment. Just try to draw a color a little bit and show me what you've got so far. Don't be afraid to call me over.
ask a question on my back. I messed up my back last night, so let's go on that. So let's cover a little bit of um, some uh, cell shading and such. Let's say I want to colorize a version of this drawing with flat colors. And I also want to create a version uh, with like some more cool gradients and stuff. So what I would like is uh, to do this in, in different faces, uh, different layers that is. Uh, I've got a layer right here. Color, colorized faces, um, I want to then uh, put highlights and, and shadows and cool stuff like that. I want to do it on a separate layer. So obviously very easy to duplicate your layer. So go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to lock the current layer, hide the current layer, right click, duplicate, call that one fancy colors face. So I sort of have a progression of things in terms of a very basic uh, colorization, very basic, first of all, very basic sketch, very basic circles, then refined shapes, then basic colors. OK, now we can do some fancy colorization. Okay, so with the um, with this with this particular um, character here, let's say um, I want to do some very simple shading. So um, this can be a complex topic, but if you break it down very simply into light and shadow and mid tones. The things that are closer to a light source are brighter. The things that are further from a light source are darker. That's like the basic way that you can do something interesting. Things closer to the light source, brighter. Things further from the light source, darker. So let's say I'm drawing a, just for fun, I'm going to draw a, a light bulb or a lamp or something right here. You don't have to do this, but it might help you uh, in terms of, OK, I'm going to draw uh, a light bulb right here. There's a light bulb or something, I guess. There we go. Yeah, light bulb. So if the if the uh, light is going in all of these directions, uh, there's an area over here that is the uh, brightest uh, colors because it's closer to the light source. There's an area over here that would be darker. Yes, of course, because of three-dimensionality and cheekbones and musculature and all of that, it's way more complex than that. But just to be very, very simple to uh, go on this path, and of course then practice makes perfect, making it very basic like this. OK, so sort of like the left side of that drawing is going to be brighter, and the right side is going to be darker. So if I kind of know that, my idea is that with the, with the line tool, I can go in and sort of divide up the whole shape, something like that, and then this other one, something like that. Again, if you have more practice and all of that, you'll probably do a better job. But in the basic idea here is, I now, with the pencil tool, have separated these different shapes. Because a different color has crossed them, because I've used the line tool or the pencil tool that does not leave a gap when I'm going to delete this eventually. Because I've separated things, I can then fill in a different color. So let's say I'm going to start with this skin tone color. And then in my properties, I can select a darker version of the color. So if I selected a certain color, I can then use the color wheel to make a darker version of the color, the brightness of the color. 
and pull that down. Depending on how dark I go, it'll be more dramatic. Or actually, I'm going the opposite way. I'm going brighter, aren't I? The left side is going to be brighter. So that's going to be the saturation of it, a brighter version of the color. So on that side of the face, I've got a brighter version of the color. And I either get a darker or lighter right here. B for the brightness, I can then get a darker version of the color. S for saturation, I can get a lighter version of the color. Same thing on this side. Further from the light source, I can select that, go to my colors, go to my color wheel, color mixer, go into a darker version of the color. If I were then to remove those lines, there's still a lot to, to work with, of course. But in, in three variations of the face color, the midtone, the highlight, the shadow, the midtone, and the middle, um, I'm starting to see some sense of depth. I, I feel I definitely see it there. Maybe here it's too much. Well, it's still all editable. I can grab this edge and further move it over. You can still edit all of this. So like this, I can go in and pull this further to the left. It's not going to be perfect always, like I said, but you still have the ability to, to move this over, depending how it's drawn. If all else fails, also you can do the brush or the eraser. Let's see, maybe over here, over here. In this case, probably the just redrawing it. So that, that took a little more effort, but you see, I had a, a bigger chunk of color. It was too big, and I'm just really, really freestyling it at the moment. Uh, but I, have a, I had a larger chunk of color that went all the way down here. Well, I st was still able to go back in and manipulate it and grab those edges and, and kind of change that. And then even something like this. Maybe the, you know, that the cheek is popping out like that, and then the temple is coming in like that. That was a straight line a moment ago, and then when I push and pull these edges, I can get these different shapes and curves and go a little bit further. Zooming in often really helps because then you see exactly where things are moving. And then thinking in terms of, of shapes and three-dimensionality, yes, it is complex, but with practice and observing and watching your favorite shows and pausing it and looking at it, you can do things where, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the hair in terms of uh, something like that. I'm going to break that apart, drew some different shapes in there, get a darker version of the color. Drop in that color there, drop in that color there. Things further from the light source, like I said. Okay, then I want a brighter version of the color. How
how bright, how dark, I, I can't really tell you that. I guess we could figure it out perhaps mathematically, but whatever is brighter, whatever is darker, that's, uh, and what looks good to you, that might be the answer. And then these lines, all of these are separate lines. I want to remove all of those separate lines at once. So if you connect them all with the same color, it doesn't matter if you do it simply like that or like this, squiggle, that'll work because it's different. And they're gone. So dividing up these shapes, this is basic cell shading, uh, hard edges, uh, taking it the next level is using gradients and such. Um, they're all separate shapes, but uh, starting it like this, I'm going to pause here for just a moment, give that a shot, try to divide up your, your shapes into sub-shapes and fill in colors, play with it, undo, try different things. Very similar. Try just a little bit more. 
Has anyone's computer crashed today? <laughs> Surprisingly, no. Yeah. Surprisingly, not yet. Surprisingly, not yet. But is it zero days without an accident? <laughs> Hopefully it stays that way. Exactly. No, hopefully it's 20 days without an accident. Yeah, because they're not going to still stay. Magically disappear on you. That would be rough. You get a special prize for the most crashes, yes. All right, so I think perhaps at this point, um, maybe we'll uh, end the lecture. Are there, while I'm here, are there more questions on this? It really is a lot about practice, but if you want me to go back and do something again, does it make sense? Any questions, or you just want to start the, the work? Raise your hand if you just want to get to work. All right, so I think we'll do that. We'll uh, start the, the lab time at this point. Remember to save your work. Um, so Matt and Isaac, um, I'm talking at the moment. Isaac. Isaac. So uh, at this point, um, I'm going to end the lecture at this point. You can start your... Uh, you can start your work and continue with what you've been doing previously, and maybe with what we've talked about today, you can apply it to what you've been uh, working on, hopefully. A little colorization, a little bit of interesting edges and stuff like that. So uh, we'll work. If you need any help, call any of us over. Take a break whenever you'd like. We'll close at 4. Remember, this is due on Monday at 4, so you'll have one more lab time on Monday, but I wouldn't rely on that final hour and a half on Monday. Um, you could. It's kind of like brushing it. It's a lot of uh, yeah. pressure, yeah. I believe we've got this software at the library, uh, so you can work over there.